Hello and welcome to Limitless Life. I am Larry Hutton and I am just so honored to be able to bring you the bread of heaven, the bread of life today. Open the Word of God and just spend time together with the Lord Jesus. I'm telling you what, it's a great, great time when you're spending time with Jesus. Jesus and His Word are one and so it, the, word of the, the Word of God is called Living Word. Of course, Jesus is alive. You and I that have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are alive unto Him, alive unto God. We're in right standing with God. We have favor with God. We can talk to Him regularly, and you should. You should be carrying on conversations with Him, with him throughout your day, every day. Uh, and I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a wonderful life to live when you understand that you have been given the victory and you're an overcomer and you can have fun in life, enjoy life completely, uh, that the word shalom in the old covenant, that nothing missing, nothing break, broken, everything complete, you're complete in him as he is, so are you in this world, 1 John 4, 17. In fact, that's been our foundation text here for the last a couple of months now, over a couple of months. We started a series over nine weeks ago. We're now in the middle of our 10th week. So this is actually going to be our 48th program. If you're just joining us and have missed all the 47, you're still going to get blessed. You'll still get a lot of understanding because like every one of these programs, because of the subject we're talking about, it's like they can stand alone to really bless you and help you. But then when you put them all together, it's like, just building blocks that are causing you to be stronger and stronger and more secure in your faith with God and watch God's fruit abound in your life. I tell you, it just gets, as this little country boy from Odessa, Florida says, it gets gooder and gooder. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I love it. So this is our 48th program. Uh, it's a three-part series that we're doing, a part A, a part B, and a part C, ABCs. I call it the true ABCs of Christianity or the ABCs of true Christianity is really what I call it. A being what God has made you, B what God is, or yeah, A being what God has made you, B what God's given you, and B, what, uh, C what God's called you to do. So A, what God's given you, that just means who you are in Christ. B, what God has given you, that means what God has already given you, what you already have. And then C is what God has called you to do. What can you do and what should you be doing? What is your purpose in life? Why does God have you here is the C part of the three-part series. So the first six weeks we covered part A. In fact, we went over 23 things uh, that God has made you. Man, they were powerful. Uh, the last four weeks now we've been covering part B, which is what God has given you. And it's important. Our foundation text has been 1 John 4, 17. As He is, so are we in this world. And so far we've covered four things on our list. And you know, I told you in part A, what God has made you, we covered 23 things. I told you in part B, we're probably going to be covering 50 things. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little less, maybe, maybe more, who knows. But uh, part B is what God has made you. And we've already covered four of 50. Oh, got a long ways to go, don't we? Yeah, so here's the four we've covered so far. God has given you Jesus. Number one, He gave you Jesus, which means He gave you Himself. And we covered a lot of scriptures to see that that means a whole lot more than just the words He gave you Jesus. Most people don't even know what that means. Number two, God has given you the same anointing that He gave to Jesus. Number three, God has given you His Zoe. His very life is in you. What does that mean? Well, we've looked at a lot of verses there. And then what God has given you, number four, is God has given you a team, a winning team. He's given you a spot, a place, an irreplaceable spot on, a t on this team. You know, in the natural, you can have a spot on a football team or a spot on a baseball team or a spot on a basketball team. Somebody better comes along, you get replaced. But you can't be replaced on this team. God's given you the team. He's given you a spot that's irreplaceable. And then God put himself on the team. <laughs> Man, we're on a winning team. So we've actually been discussing a lot of scriptures already that what does that mean to have God on our team? And uh, we're going to look at a few more today that I think will be really good. So let's, let's get in the Bible, get in the word of God, the word of truth. Jesus said uh, his words are spirit. And his words are life. Uh, Jesus said, you can't live on natural food alone. Your body can, but you can't. 
You have to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So let's go to Psalm 37, verse number 39. Psalm 37, 39, it said, The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. So notice that word salvation, the salvation of the righteous. You and I are righteous. We know from the New, New Testament that if we're in Christ, that we're righteous, that He became sin. Remember 2 Corinthians 5, 21, He became sin so that we would become righteous when we accept Him. So we are righteous. So the salvation of the righteous, this word salvation uh, refers to uh, spiritual and natural things. And let me give you the definitions of this word salvation. It means deliverance. It means help. It means safety. It means victory. So it's an all-inclusive term, and he's talking about both spiritual deliverance and spiritual help and spiritual safety and spiritual victory, but he's also talking natural. So he's talking physical deliverance, physical help, physical safety, physical victory, uh, financial help, financial deliverance, financial safety, financial victory, um, emotional. This is mental, emotional deliverance, emotional help, emotional safety, emotional victory. So you don't have to yield to depression anymore. Don't have to yield to discouragement. Don't have to yield to guilt. Don't have to yield to shame. Oh, but Larry, you don't know what I've done. No, wait a minute. I'm showing you all of the first six weeks who you, who you are, what God's already made you. And now these last four weeks, what He's given you. So that's why we're looking at these things. So you've got to believe more what God says about you than, than your past says about you. All right? So He says, God is... Uh, uh, the salvation of the righteous, and He is their strength in the time of trouble. You know, when you're not in trouble, you don't, it's like you don't, you're not mentally aware that you need any help right now. You know, I mean, it's just everything's going along fine. You're not really thinking about, oh man, I could sure use some help right now because I'm going through all hell, right? No, it's when we go through times of trouble is when we're more aware that, boy, we need. Now, you and I, the, here's the key, which I think this has really helped me in my life. I'm, I try and be more aware that He's my strength before I ever get into trouble. So I'm daily meditating on what He is in my life. He's my strength. He's my shield. He's my song. He's my victory. He's my high tower. He's my hiding place. So if you're always thinking that, then when you enter the trouble, it's not hard to keep thinking that. You don't get into fear. You don't get stressed out. You don't have panic attacks. You don't have all those things because, well, he's my, I'm the righteous. He's my salvation, and he's my strength in time of trouble. Just like he's my strength before the trouble came, during the trouble, he's still my strength. I think he says that just so that people can have faith in him when they're in trouble. We have a tendency to believe God. Oh, yes, I believe God when everything's fine. But then when the virus comes along or the, the terrorist activity comes along or, or the elections don't go the way we want comes along or whatever, I can't pay the bill comes along or the job is no longer my source because I no longer have a job, I, I'm at home or whatever. And we tend to forget He's my salvation and He's my strength. Okay, I'm in a time of trouble. Big deal. God is my strength. God is my source. Whew, he's my deliverance. He's my help. He's my safety. And he's my victory. Isn't that good? So in other words, I don't, I don't elevate the trouble. I don't exalt the trouble. I don't magnify the trouble. I magnify the Lord who is my strength. Hallelujah. Let's go over to Psalm 46, verse 1. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Remember, we found out one of God's redemptive names or redemptive attributes was the Lord, Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. Where? Present. 
the Lord is present. The Lord is right there with you. So here he is. God is our refuge. God is our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. I looked up these words, present help, and it just means he's always with us. He's, uh, he's always going to help us. That is, if we allow him to. Now, he's always standing ready. His grace is ready to flow as soon as faith is released, as soon as we believe that we are what he says we are, we have what he says we have, we can do what he says we can do. When we believe, then grace empowers us to have, be, do, because it's all on him. Praise God. So he's a very present help in time of trouble. And this word trouble, actually in the Hebrew, it means a tightness or a tight spot. Um, it has other definitions, Ad adversary, adversity, affliction, anguish. So it includes now negative emotions, distress, tribulation, trouble. So this, this word, but when I thought about, you know, all of those things, whether it's emotions or physical affliction or financial or whatever, it's adversity, it's adversity. It's a, it's a, I'm in a tight spot. And the main definition of this Hebrew word trouble is tightness. So you find yourself in a tight spot. Maybe it's a tight spot with the marriage, a tight spot emotionally, a tight spot physically, a tight spot financially. Well, God is there. He's a very present help during that tight spot. Mm. And all of us face those times on a regular basis. Nobody's exempt from them. So, you know, when people hear me say, you know, well, I just don't yield to that. That's the key is it's just like... Every one of you probably have sins that have come and tried to tempt you that you did not yield to. Now, you could have, and maybe in your past, maybe before Jesus or even your early years with Jesus, maybe you did yield and you kept falling into those sins, but then you finally came to a place where you got the word and you resisted and you no longer yield to those sins. It's the same way with any trouble because all of us face adversity. All of us find ourselves in tight spots. But bless God, God is with us and helps us. So it's, it's okay, I'm in a tight spot, but God. I'm in a tough situation, but God. I'm in this hardship, but God. You know, if we have the but in the right place, <laughs> instead of, you know, God says this, but I don't know what I'm going to do. And God said he's my healer, but I'm sick. And God, no, we got our butt in the wrong place. If we get our butt in the right place, but God, but God, but God, whew, you'll be like a billy goat that can't quit. But God, but God, you'll be like butting the devil right out of the, right out of your life, man. <laughs> Glory to God. Turn over to Isaiah 12, Isaiah chapter 12. And verse number two, Isaiah 12, two, it says, God, first of all, it says, behold, <laughs> kind of like all of those Christmas plays, behold, the lamb has come, the light of the world. So behold, so Isaiah 12, two, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust. How many of these scriptures the last few days and last weeks we've been looking at that we see faith and trust and believing God? So God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Not be afraid means not worry. Not be afraid means not be stressed out. Not be afraid means no panic. No, I will not. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. And he also has become my salvation. So notice what it says. The first part of the verse says, God's my salvation. The end of the verse ends with God's my salvation. So God is what? My what? My salvation. This word salvation means deliverance. It means victory. It means prosperity. It means health. It means help. It means my welfare. I love this word because it's just all inclusive. He's my deliverance, my victory, my prosperity, my health, my help, my welfare. But this verse, it gives us the key to release that salvation, that grace of God. It gives us the key into our lives. It says right here, I will trust and not be afraid. Hmm. So God gives us a stark contrast here between trusting God 
and fear. I want to deal with this just a minute. He says, I will trust and not be afraid. So we can add some words. I will trust and I will not be afraid. So I will trust and I will not be afraid. Showing us that to do one is to not do the other. I can trust or have faith in God, but not be in fear too at the same time. I can't trust, have faith in God, and be fearing. Now, now listen to me because you maybe think I'm contradicting um, some other ministers and stuff that you listen to. Listen so that you understand this. I understand you can have faith and fear at the same time, but faith is of the heart. Romans 10, with the heart man believes. Fear comes to the mind. In, in uh, uh, Mark's the ninth gospel, whenever the man with the uh, son that was possessed of devils and the devils kept throwing the boy into the fire to try and kill him and then into the waters to try and drown him, and, he, and the devil kept failing and failing and failing like he is a big failure. But anyway, he kept trying to kill the son. And so the man brought the son to Jesus and said, Jesus, if you can uh, do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said, well, since you called on my compassion, I can do anything. Um, but what can you believe for? What can you believe for? He said, I, Jesus said, if you can believe, I can do anything. So if you can believe, I can do all things. And then the man said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. So there we have faith and doubt, unbelief, at the same time operating. But here's what he was saying. He was saying, Lord, I believe in my heart. But man, I've got a lot of doubt hitting my head right now. So you believe with the heart, and yet even though doubts are coming against the head, you can still stay in faith which is what Jesus was telling Jairus. Remember when Jairus was on his way to his house with Jesus? He had gone and found Jesus. He, he, when he left his house, the, the baby, his, I mean, his little girl was about to die. He said, uh, my daughter lieth at the point of death. That was when he left the house. He had to go spend time to go find Jesus, and then it took a whole lot of time to get back to his house. So... His daughter was about to die when he left. He didn't know she was still alive or not, but he did say to Jesus, come, lay your hands on her, and she's going to live. So he was in faith. Then the woman with the issue of blood stops the procession, and that takes a while, and then people come to Jairus' house and tell Jairus, your daughter's dead. And Jesus immediately, in Mark 5, immediately, he said, as soon as he heard the words, remember Mark 5, right after the woman uh, he tells the woman, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Then, he tell, then as soon as he said that, people came from Jairus' and said, Jairus' house and said, don't trouble Jesus anymore. Your daughter's dead. And as soon as he heard those words, he said, don't be afraid, only believe. He's told Jairus. Now, Jairus is already in faith. He said, come lay your hands on my daughter. She's going to live. That's faith. He's, but when he heard the words, your daughter's dead, then thoughts of fear came to his head. Now, he was believing in his heart, but thoughts of fear. So here he had belief and unbelief at the same time. But what he did with the unbelief determined whether, he, whether his faith was going to be operative, active, verb faith or not. And Jesus said, okay, now, Jairus, don't you get in fear. Don't fear, only believe. Only means you can't do both at the same time if your faith's going to work. Now, you may temporarily be, have both at the same time against you, but one's of the heart, the other's of the head. The doubt's coming against your head. Don't let it stay or it'll get in your heart and shut your faith off. Are you seeing what I'm saying? And then you don't have both of them operating in the heart. Either only one's going to operate in the heart and you'll get the benefits of the one. So I can't trust or have faith in God and be fearing. No, if I'm fearing, I'm not trusting because trusting God is what delivers me from fear. So again, the verse here says, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. So God is my salvation. I'm going to trust. I'm not going to be afraid, right? And if you look at all the scriptures where Jesus said, 
Fear not, only believe. Fear not, fear not. He's letting you know, no, you need to be in faith and not fear. You can't do both at the same time. Now, fear can come against your head, but don't you let it stay. That's bringing every thought captivity to the captivity of Christ. That gets rid of the fear coming against you so that the fear that's trying to affect your unbelief doesn't stay, and that way your faith be is active and you get things accomplished. All right, let's look at another verse. One more here. Isaiah 40. Wow, I can't believe we're almost out of time. We only have about five more minutes. Isaiah 40, let's read verses 28 through 31. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. I love this passage right here. This is just this is just verse 28 here, but and let's just stop here a minute. Notice it says, um, he doesn't faint. Have you not heard the Lord creator of the ends of the earth? He doesn't faint. In other words, the Lord doesn't get tired of the problems that you keep bringing. Oh, Lord, no, I, I know you're just going to get tired of my mistakes. And I know I've gone through this thing over and over and over this hardship and I keep bringing it to you. Lord, no, no. No matter how often you bring your problems and your mistakes and your failures to God, he's not going to all of a sudden go oh, and fall over and faint. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't faint. And he, it, he doesn't grow weary. Now, this is a cool Hebrew word. Doesn't grow weary means to gasp <gasps> or to be exhausted. Okay. You know, when you bring him your problem for the millionth time, the Lord is not <gasps> gasping or exhausted because of how many times you do something wrong or how many times you have you, these same problems over and over. No, God's not not tired, not going to grow weary. And it says his understanding is unsearchable. That should encourage you right there. <laughs> that the, the guy that gave you the team that you're on and the, you can't be replaced and then put himself on the team, he knows everything. The word understanding right here, his understanding is unsearchable. Uh, it, it means intelligence. His intelligence, his, his reason, his skillfulness, his, his understanding, and his wisdom is unsearchable. Wow. That's our God. That's on our team, by the way. And then I got a real kick out of one of the definitions of the word unsearchable. <laughs> um, uh, one of the definitions of the word uns unsearchable means um, deliberation. In other words, uh, uh, to have a formal consultation or a formal discussion. Our God, is it's, He's not having to have a deliberation or a formal consultation. In other words, God doesn't all of a sudden say, when you bring Him your problem for the umpteenth time, He doesn't all of a sudden say, uh, Jesus, Holy Spirit, come here, come here, guys. Uh, I need a consultation. I need a meeting with you guys because something come up on, on their life and uh, I, I don't know what to do. Oh, I just don't know what to do. No, uh -uh. His, his understanding, His, his uh, intelligence, reason, skillfulness, understanding, and wisdom is unsearchable. So He already knows what to do before you need the answer. Is that cool or what? And then the next verse, he gives power, Isaiah 40 still, verse 29. Now, he gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. He gives power when you feel weak. So if you'll use your faith in that, that word power is vigor, force, capacity, means uh, ability. We looked at this before, but it also means chameleon, <laughs> I like that, and force and might and power and strength and substance chameleon. Man, I can be like a chameleon, bless God, when the enemy's coming against me, he's all of a sudden not even going to be able to see me. I'll be like a chameleon. I just blend in with God, blend in with Jesus, blend in with the rock. <laughs> wow. Praise God. Hallelujah. When, 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 he gives power when we feel weak. So you need to get this thinking in you because you're going to feel weak. There are times we face things. I feel weak. 
but then because I've been meditating on things, I'm not going to let those feelings dictate to me how I feel or what I do. Bless God, okay, I may feel weak, but God gives me His vigor, His force, His capacity, His means, His ability. He even makes me like a chameleon, and He gives me His force, His might, His power, His strength, His substance, and His wealth. That's all the definitions of this word power. He gives power to the weak. So I'll take hold of that. That's how I'm going to believe and act when I feel weak. God, you give me power. You give me ability. Bless God, if I have to be like the chameleon, I'll just blend in and the devil will be looking. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I can't attack him when I can't see him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Today. I'm having so much fun sharing the Word of God in this series with you. What God has made you, what God has given you, and what God's called you to do. We'll pick it up next week or next program. Uh, but uh, in Him, get a hold of this if you're not gotten it. All it is is me for two over over two hours. You can download it MP3 or you can order the CDs. Just quoting scriptures on who you are, what you have, what you can do. Powerful stuff that you need to get on your inside and in your thinking. Praise God. And then consider supporting us financially. Our partners are helping get to you so you can be blessed. Have a Jesus-filled day. We'll see you next program. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Do you know yourself? Who you really are? Not the natural carnal person that the world says you are, but the saved, word-filled, Holy Spirit-empowered believer that you really are in the eyes of God. At times, each of us has struggled with our identity, ability, and purpose in our lives as believers. But God's Word is filled with His descriptions of who you really are in Him. In this two-part scripture recording, you will hear Dr. Hutton quote all the Bible scriptures about who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what you can do in Christ. In Him scriptures will help you build and strengthen the very foundations of your faith, enabling you to believe and therefore speak all that God has created you to be, to have, and to do, not in your own power, but in Him. To order In Him scriptures, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.